I'm Joss. Hi, I'm Claudia. And this is the Let's Get Down to Business podcast. We're two cousins on opposite ends of the globe with a lot of opinions about figure skating. And we're here to deliver the news, recaps, and yell at our screens for the injured men to not be competing. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our International de France episode where we're going to be talking about the men and ice dance events for this Grand Prix leg. If you missed our previous episode where we talked about women and pairs, very sorry that we missed the NHK recap. We had a bit going on and Joss had a family emergency that she had to attend to last week, so we decided not to record. But we are back and here to fill your ears with our unsolicited opinions for this Grand Prix. (laughs) Yeah, and in this episode, we are going to be recapping men and dance. Oh, gosh. Where to start? Where to start? Um, Well, I know exactly where to start, and that's with (laughs) ice dance and not men. (laughs) Yes, always. Um, First, a little bit of news, though. The first two episodes of the Montreal Ice Dance documentary thing that the Olympic Channel is running is apparently out. Well, it is out. I just checked. It's called On Edge. So you can just Google that or go through the Olympics.com website. I think that the episodes are only around like 15 minutes long. So, And that is a damn shame because boy, do I want that drama. Uh, But yes, they are out. Uh, You should go and check it out because Lord knows we will be doing that. (laughs) Why wouldn't you check it out? We've got skating content. (laughs) And we were deprived of that last season. Yes. Um, Yeah, so that's that. We're going to be watching it. And speaking of ice dance, let's move on to our recap of the ice dance event. And a little bit of news regarding the teams who were originally supposed to compete. Originally, Cleo Hamon and Dennis Strakalin, the pair who did the fifth element free dance at Worlds 2021. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They were, yeah, they were assigned, but they have split. And Dennis is already on the Ice Partner Search website looking for a new partner. And additionally, another split team is the team of Adelina Galavieva and Louis Torrent. Uh, who split due to the chronic injury of Louis. And they're replaced by Luisia Demugio and Theo Lemercier. As well, Tiffany Zahorski and Jonathan Guerrero withdrew due to the hospitalization of Tiffany. And they were replaced here by Yulia Turquila and Matthias Versluy, who have made huge improvements in a short space of time. Who can still remember when Julia was skating singles for Finland? Oh, yes. She was gorgeous. Glad to see you're still competing. Absolutely. And uh, who knows what's going on with Russian ice dance, but that is a discussion for another day. Um, I'll kiss and cry. <laughs> why don't we start off with our 10th place finishers? Yes, and they are the team of Jennifer Jantz van Rensberg. I'm sorry, I totally butchered that name. And Benjamin Stefan. They represent Germany. And their costumes oh, they're good were costumes. so good. So, so good for both the rhythm dance and the free dance. They looked so, so, so stylish. Um, For the rhythm dance, they skated to Is This Love and Ain't No Sunshine. The back of Jennifer's costume is awesome. Unfortunately, Benjamin had a freak fall in the midline step two, caught his heel on a rut on the ice or something, um, and Jennifer dropped a level in the twizzle. Who knows what was happening on this ice with this ice quality? Who knows? I also question the ice quality at the Warsaw Cup, but we'll talk about that later. Um, Key points, no yes, no yes. They did come in 10th for the rhythm dance. However, I really enjoyed them. I did too. And then the James Bond soundtrack for the free dance. Oh my gosh, gorgeous costumes again. I know. Um, With these kind of jewel tones that kind of match, but aren't like matchy matchy, as they said in season one of The Hills. (laughs) Not too matchy-matchy, but just enough matchy. Um, just beautiful. I love it. Yes. Very stylish. Benjamin has this lovely forest green um, coat going on with a fuchsia stripe to match to subtly match Jennifer's fuchsia dress. This team has style. Much better through the twizzles today. Both got level four. A nice diagonal step level three. Beautiful. But the solely piano selection of James Bond music pieces is a choice i'm not sure if it delivered the impact i was expecting when i saw the music uh, listing however i did love seeing this team for the first time 
Yes. Um, and then our ninth place team, Luisia Demujo and Theo de Le Mercier. Um, we had some Michael Jackson going on in the rhythm dance here with The Way You Make Me Feel and Billie Jean, which I think is very, very welcome combination for our midnight blues here and Bolero for the free dance. Oh. But it wasn't even like proper, be- it was <laughs> Lon Lon Ravel's Bolero. <laughs> Is, is there really ever a proper bolero here? Who, who, whose bolero is the proper one? I don't know. I was the like, age old question. <laughs> it was it was an odd choice of bolero music in my in my mind. Yeah. Um, the rhythm dance, just not not my favorite rhythm dance, although the music choice was pretty on point. Yeah. All right, moving on to our eighth place finishes, our pod faves, Alison Reed and Sully Sambri Lovisius. Wow, I've gotten so good at saying his name. <laughs> oh my gosh, I do, I do enjoy them so much. Uh, I, very stylish. What's with all of these style I icons know. down here in the, in the ice dance uh, event here? So uh, Alison good. looks phenomenal. Salius looks phenomenal. Um, and I actually really like this rhythm dance. However, midline step was only a level one. Key points, yes, yes, no, no. And then, oh, they caught their edges in the pattern step and both went down and oh, my heart broke. Truly the worst. Heart broke. I feel so sad. I know. And I really like this rhythm dance for them. It fits the theme really nice and tastefully, um, which the I music don't... music cuts aren't terrible. They aren't terrible at all. But I don't like to see them sad. No. Let's oh. never see that again. I know. Um, also, who's the bloody person in charge of the Lithuanian citizenship approval process? Yeah, because we need to have a word with you. We need to have a word. Like, I will happily, in person, ferry that um, citizenship over to Allison because she needs it. Just saying. And she deserves it. They've been together for so long. So, please, yeah. Lithuania. What is up with that? Anyway. move on. Their Free Dance to Vinegar and Salt by Hoover Phonic and White Lies by Carl Hugo. We love Alison in an emerald silk. Both um, Alison and Sal look so smart, so sleek. Love it. Yes. Uh, we also love salt and vinegar chips. I had that in my notes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> they are my top fave. I think in our intro episode, like our very, very first episode, I mentioned that these were my fave. And that's how I communicate at parties. Just grab the bowl of salt and vinegar chips and <laughs> like the entire bowl um, and then have people come to me because they want to eat. And then that's how I start conversations because I don't like going up to people. Um, <laughs> have them come to me. Um, anyways. Anyways. Uh, we did lose a lot of levels here. Um, the one foot step uh, and the diagonal step was really only a level one. Oh, no. very sad. Sad days. Yeah. Also, in that free dance warm up, they were doing their, they were practicing their twizzles and they almost collided with Morozov and Bargain, who were practicing their midline step. And bloody Andre keeps on twizzling out of it. I'm like, stop, you almost collided. Not a ton, not the time, Andre. No. Sir. Um,. However, lovely rotational lift level four with a majority of plus threes and four came fourth in PCS. Lovely. And placed sixth in the free dance, which that was very nice to see. They scored 105.40, which is almost uh, a season's best or personal best. I think it's personal best. Um, So glad to see them on the up and up and glad to see them here. Yes, always lovely to see them. Uh, and in seventh place, we have... Yulia Tequila and Matthias First Lee. Hopefully that's similar to how it's pronounced. I'm sorry. Um, for their rhythm dance, they skated Breathe You In My Dreams by Trixie Whitley and River by Bishop Briggs. Yulia is looking like a snow queen. Um, she, lovely to see her back on the competitive circuit after her career as a single skater. And she's spent a few years in dance now. Um Slow rotation in the twizzles, but decent. Um, unfortunately, she lost it in the second set and only got a level two. Um, key points were no yes, no yes. But overall, it, she, they're a little raw and rough around the edges in certain areas, but I think they're constantly improving, which is great to see. But would love to see them um, carry more speed across the ice. Uh, but they move well together and have they've got a really refreshing, like clean style. Yes, I agree. Um, and then in the free dance here, we have some Louis Capaldi 
<laughs> because Ed, Sh- there's no Ed Sheeran in France, so Louis Capaldi got to step in. <laughs> are is, are those? <laughs> is is he the uh, the gosh? What what's the word for it? Uh, the person that fills in for you and and yeah, the warm up, the bench warmer, the bench for warmer. Ed Sheeran is Louis Capaldi, but Louis Capaldi can definitely hold his own. He, like he's amazing. So it's yes, not the warm up version. Love. It's maybe like the warm up premium where <laughs> it's all in jest. Where Ed also is at warm up premium. They're equal. Um, slow but clean through the twizzles yet again. One foot steps were level two for both of them. Midline step was two as well. Um, combo spin was only level three. But you know what? They really came alive as soon as bruises came on. As soon as Lewis entered the stadium, entered the group chat. And that choreo uh, character step sequence um, into that choreo slide move was really, really great. And kind of made me wish they could have shown more of that energy in the first half. Because I really enjoyed the second half. Yes, I definitely did. Um, it's probably that Lewis Capaldi, you know, warmed up that bench real good. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. But yeah, the second half was so great. Uh, I don't know what it is about Lewis that just really turned it up for them. But I, I wish that that energy had carried through the whole program. I want that energy too, man. I want that energy too. It just in my life in general. Yeah, exactly. You can probably hear it in our voices. We're just like, uh, we need this energy. <laughs> we, we need some energy. Um, and then our sixth place finishers. Oh boy, that boom boom pow. Boom boom pow is back, back in my style. What else? <laughs> what what comes next? Back in my style. <laughs> oh goodness. We should just do a spoken word of boom boom pow whenever someone skates to it. Wow, that would actually be an awful idea. You'd never do that. Um, but it's Annabelle Morozov and Andre Bargain skating to My Body is a Cage by Peter Gabriel and Boom Boom Pow by the Black Eyed Peas. I can't get over the loose straps from his shoulders to his wrists. Like, why is that needed? Yes. Um, gosh, there's a lot to unpack here. Um, however, the twizzles were not their best here. Uh, she bobbled in the twizzles and she lost a level on the twizzles. Um, the pattern step, both of them had a level two and then the midline step only a level one here. So not their best. Yeah, lots of points left on the table. But that's what you get for skating to Boom Boom Pow. I'm kidding. I'm absolutely kidding. Um, <laughs> in their free dance, they skated to Scheherazade. Andre is in head to toe maroon, while Annabelle is in royal blue. I f- <sighs> We've spoken about this program before, and I feel like this team is insanely dramatic, but also misses the X Factor mark by a smidge. Yeah, I don't really know what it is. Like all everything is there for them to really deliver, but then it doesn't something hit. just doesn't quite click. Yeah, it doesn't hit. Yeah. Um the GOE score sheet was very much mainly uh zeros through to plus threes with only like a few plus fours in the whole whole sheet. Um levels dropped again. Annabelle dropped a level in the twizzles again. So far, far, far from their best, they scored 103.87 in their free dance and Nikolai Morozov was left shaking his head, Uh, which fair enough because they definitely have scored and skated better. Yes. In fifth place, we have Christina Carrera and Anthony Ponomarenko, who skated very well in the rhythm dance to Bat Dance by Prince. Oh, so nice to see them. And such a great music selection for the rhythm dance. Here, I feel like apart from maybe Boom Boom Pow, we had a lot of very smart music selections for the rhythm dance. So I appreciate all of that. Yes. They started off their rhythm dance with some whacking, which is awesome to see. Still not a huge fan of these costumes, um, but... They've definitely skated this a lot better than we've seen them skate it before. So that's great. But I felt like it started off well and then fell a bit flat for me, at least. Yeah, I I don't think this. And again, Prince, you really have to kind of like keep it up in a Kevin Amos kind of way. Um, (laughs) Very true. But they didn't quite sustain that energy to the end. Definitely a needs more energy kind of situation again. Um, and then in the free dance, we have Wicked Game by Chris Isaac. You can tell that Scott Moyer choreographed this program because there are... I was just going to say that. There are a lot of moves and steps that are very reminiscent of um, Virtual Moyer programs, especially in that one footstep sequence. I was like, yes, I've definitely seen this a lot before. Um, and Anthony dropped a level in the twizzles. They, were, they had a deduction for an extended lift as well. Um, a lot of plus ones through to plus threes on their score sheet. Uh, 
not the smoothest performance from them today. No, definitely not. Uh, some stumbles here and there. Um, and then there's kind of like just this weird music switch. <laughs> And it's weird because the rhythm dance music was great and a great choice, but then they kind of messed it up for the free dance. (laughs) I don't know. Yeah, it it's it's weird when so it starts off like nice and lyrical and then we get taken to the club. And in contrast to kind of the music, I kind of the program loses me when we enter the club. I, maybe it's just too stark a contrast with the start and maybe like not enough transition into the party vibes. Um, who knows? But according to Mark Hanready, Anthony's shirt came from Scott Moyer's wardrobe. <laughs> what is it with uh, coaches giving I their know. pupils their shirts? I mean, fair enough. But like, at least it's better than the shirt from Shailene's it's closet true. for Nathan. <laughs> nothing, nothing will beat that. So yeah, that free dance, there were just a few stumbles here and there that really, really cost them. And they ended up getting pipped to the curb by Evgenia Loporeva and Jeffrey Brissaud of France, who uh, skated in uh, the Grand Prix of Italy and came fourth here. Even with the rhythm dance that... Uh, oh no, the <laughs> rhythm dance, the music is so good. The choreography, so bad. Is and so, so bad. Appropriated. Oh gosh. <laughs> The next episode by Dr. Dre free- featuring Snoop Dogg, as well as Killing Me Softly with his song by Fugees and Jump Around by House of Pain. All great music. All great pieces of music, but hate the choreo, love the music, but they did well. <laughs> yes, they did. Uh, and a big mood switch uh, to the free dance. Which I much prefer. This funeral music here. Even though it's funeral music. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they did very well. Twizzles, both of them level four. One foot step, both of them level three. We have a serpentine step come in. Yes. But why does Jeffrey look like he could be Saul's younger brother with like less immaculate but still great hair? Oh, wow. I didn't make that connection, but now I totally have. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely see it. Um, but well done to this team, however, who probably surprised a lot of people by coming um, fourth overall here. Like I mentioned, they pipped Carrera and Panamarenko to fourth by just 0.03 points. So three hundredths of a point. So very, very, very tight. Oh, my God. Well, let's talk about our third place finishers. Oh, gosh. Where to start with these two? Uh, Alexandra Stepanova and Ivan Bukin from Russia with everybody. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Backstreet Boys. And then Monster by Sean Mendes and Justin Bieber. That again, traversing three generations of boy banders and teenage heartthrobs in this rhythm dance. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and Yvonne is loving this so much. They both love it. She loves it too. She's just not as outwardly into it, but you can tell. She vibes. Ivan is just like, he's absolutely vibing it. Like we mentioned. um, He can't hold it back. Exactly. (laughs) This is his domain. Um, The edges in the Midnight Blues are just not deep enough to compare to the top teams. However, however, they have improved a lot. Um, They've definitely put in the work in terms of skating closer together, um, you know, working on the depth of their edges as well as having their holds done very well, unlike some others. <laughs> but for their key points, they got yes, no, no, yes, and a little carrot. Uh, there was an interruption of four beats or less in the pattern. No idea what's going on there. But anyway, the fucking dubstep for the midline step sequence is such a vibe, though. <laughs> it is definitely a vibe. It was only a level one, which, huh, sadness about. But 79.89, which... Uh, was under Deanna Davis and Gleb Smolkin's score from the Warsaw oh, Cup. Gosh, what is an under their score? <laughs> I mean, they they definitely have... my dignity. My dignity is also found somewhere under there. <laughs> my sanity is also somewhere close to your dignity. <laughs> but they definitely have put in a lot of work that is subtle. But if you know ice dance, which I'm not an expert on ice dance by any means, but I can read. So I try and pick things up. Um, they weren't noticed as much because they're like subtle but important um, improvements. And then this free dance to Romeo and Juliet. I, I'm getting more used to the vocals for a time uh, for us now. And 
you know, gotta love a contemporary take on Romeo and Juliet, but I'm such a fan of this for them. I, I really, really am. I think the costumes are lovely, um, subtle, and I think just the We Have a Map of the Piano by Mum, even though that sounds ridiculous, I'm, <laughs> I actually really, really like it. Yeah, it's great. I adore it. I think that if anyone is going to do Romeo and Juliet well, it's these two. I think they're fantastic. Um, however, they did drop a ton of levels in the diagonal step level two. One foot step was level one for both of them. So definitely you could use some improvement there. Uh, yes. However, judges are willing to give them um, good GOE, mostly plus threes and fours on their score sheet. Uh, but yes, definitely can do better on getting those levels up. Um, we know that they're not the cleanest um, <laughs> dancers in the world, but I think they know that and they're working very, very hard to improve that side. Uh, like I mentioned, I find this <laughs> music really lovely, um, especially the contemporary nature of it all. But I can't, I also can't help um, but think that this could also be the soundtrack uh, to a really lovely, relaxing video game. <laughs> Like, not Animal Crossing, but, like, a, another one. Another one. There needs to be more relaxing video games. Oh, I agree. I agree. I had a really stressful day at work yesterday. I came home, plopped on the couch, and played Animal Crossing, and oh, I was... It's fantastic. I was so happy. I love it. it made me feel so much better. Um... But Stepana Rambukin coming third on the podium, and really the top three were majorly separated from the rest of the competition in terms of quality and scores. And in second place, we have Piper Gillis and Paul Poirier. Oh, still, still on this train that they're going to be on the Olympic podium. I feel it in my bones. Imagine though. Imagine. I love it. It's their time. It's their time. I'm telling exactly. you. Exactly. Very belated happy birthday to Paul, who turned the big 3-0 on the 6th of November. It's very exciting. Um, you know what else is big is their costumes for the rhythm dance. Really? It's a, uh, it's garish in a very good way. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to firmly plant myself on the train that is chugga chugga choo choo for these costumes. Really <laughs> awful, but you know. Garish, but good for them. Garish, but good for them. Yes. Good for you, says Olivia Rodrigo. Um, <laughs> this program is so greatly constructed. Um, I'm Still Standing is excellent. It's it's just very, very smart for this pattern, this rhythm, and this Olympic season. Um, nice through the pattern step. Uh, Piper got a level two. Paul got a level three. Uh, key points were yes, yes, no, yes. Um, and scored 81.35, which is 81's also the same as Deanna and Gleb got at Warsaw Cup with Boom Boom Pow. So <laughs> great work, guys. Great work, guys. Um, <sighs> and their free dance to Long and Winding Road by Paul McCartney. Uh, I really, I like both sides now. But anyways, Long and Winding Road. I really, I really like this. Uh, I'm going to stop talking about both sides now. But this is phenomenal. I really enjoy this. Um, diagonal step was level two. One foot step, she had a level three and he had a level two. Um, however, I do think that just kind of like the general construction of the program is fantastic. And the music choice suits yes. them perfectly. Yes. And the costume's a big contrast to the rhythm dance. They're in, they're both in a lovely um, navy blue and it looks like they are stars in the sky. It's gorgeous. And it, this program just makes me and my heart smile at the end. There's no like huge moments, um, but it's just very, it's like a warm hug or like a warm mug of hot chocolate. A warm mug of hot chocolate. <laughs> I love hot chocolate. Yeah. Or peppermint mocha. I Oh, peppermint mocha. Don't even ask me how much money I've spent on peppermint mocha. It's garish like these these costumes. <laughs> uh, something that was not garish, though, was uh, the rhythm dance of our winners, uh, Gabriella Papadakis and Guillaume Cizerone. What a great rhythm dance. Oh, yes. I can't get enough of it. I really can't. I think John Legend should also... Um, not get enough of this as well because it's epic. He should probably perform this at the Olympics because live music. Uh, I mean, we can't afford him, but like we can, we can dream. <laughs> um, so 
great twizzles, key points, yes, yes, no, yes. Pattern step, both got a level three. Midline step, got a level three too. However, there, I was on Ice Dance Twitter. Um, as one does. Last night or something, as one does. Um, and there's a lot of conversation about how Gabby and Guillaume skate way too far apart for a team of their, I guess, caliber, their point, the points that they're getting. Yeah, it's... In ice dance, you're supposed to have a close hold, not skate like pair skaters with Jesus in between. Um, And there are definitely pictures of a lot of space in between Gabby and Guillaume. Uh, Even, you know, ice dance noobs like me know that skating close together is something that great ice dance teams should be doing and that's what's supposed to happen. So, and people were also saying how teams like Stepana and Book and who've improved a lot on their closeness edges and holds aren't getting the recognition they deserve in terms of points while Gabby and Guillaume are out there um, skating with Jesus in between them and still scoring incredibly high. I mean, they do, they are kind of next level, but it was just pointed out that, you know, they're not as perfect as everyone kind of makes them out to be at the stage. Yes. Um, and then in the free dance... Uh, Guillaume changed his shirt. Finally. I'm a fan. Big fan. Thank you. Thank goodness. Love the new shirt. Uh, it's kind of like this bronzy, I don't know, rust colored. I don't know how to quantify it's like it, a, but it's great. Yeah, like a shimmery bronze. Yeah, it's like a shimmery bronze, kind of like rust, shimmery rust color, kind of deep orangey brown. I don't know, something like that. It just matches, which is great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> They have great speed, especially carrying into their twizzles. It's it's lovely. However, for the twizzles, um, Guillaume stumbled in the second set, and so they dropped a level. And so undoubtedly, they're the best team in the world at the moment. Although Sinitsa and Katsalapov are really actually getting up there, especially when you compare a lot of the actual dance technique. Um, but their whole package, I mean, it's... It's very clear that they're up the top. Um, However, the fact that one judge gave them a minus one GOE for the twizzles and three others gave them plus three for the same twizzles. (laughs) It's a little sketchy. It's a little sketch. That's a little bit of a farce. Like, a little sketch. Like, Guillaume visibly stumbled and you're still whacking out those plus threes. Um, KK. Anyway, I think... Gabby, who has great skating skills, is the only person in the whole event to get level four for the one footstep sequence. Um, And there are lovely, lovely small details um, in this program, such as Gabby dropping her leg when Guillaume drops his arm in the stationary lift. That's that's gorgeous. But yes, I think that this program is going to be so captivating and mesmerizing at the Olympics, isn't it? It's going to be beautiful. Yes. I really hope that we get to see um, some improvement in the technical side for Gabby and Guillaume. Oh, I do have to mention, though, this we again saw, especially in the free dance warm ups, how dangerous <laughs> ice dance can be. And it's probably the most dangerous warm up of, the, of all of the disciplines. In both warm up groups, there were almost collisions um a few almost collisions especially in the second warm-up group people were like running into each other so often not just once (laughs) multiple times um so wild absolutely wild definitely well that about wraps up our ice dance coverage let's move on to men i hate saying that every week it's it wasn't too bad this time. It wasn't yes, yes, to to their credit this week wasn't actually too bad. To their credit. Um I do have to point out that first to seventh in the short program were decently close. Top seven were all above eighty-four. Um I think it was a overall the chaos was evenly spread out so that it there weren't any like yes, kept to a minimum. Like huge highs and huge lows. Um thank you for keeping it. Kept to a minimum, exactly. But let's start with our 12th place finisher, Gabriella Frangipani, who skated also um, at the Grand Prix of Italy, the Gran Premio d'Italia. 
I just wanted to say that. <laughs> and as he said in an in interview, this is a rough translation, he didn't skate his best, although he could have definitely done worse. Which <laughs> is a mood. Facts. Yeah, facts. Why is this boy competing injured, though? He came, he went into um, the know. GP Italy with an injury, and then he's here again. Like, you can't heal that quick. No. But you know what's also back? It's the hairband on the wrist. Oh, yes, yes. It is back. And I'm pretty sure it's a hairband and not a bracelet, right? <laughs> I, I think it's a hairband, but I don't know. TBD. Maybe he'd lend one to Dennis Vasilias, as Dennis's hairbands always seem to fail at actually holding his hair together. It's just too much. Too much for the hairband. Um, <laughs> Gabriella, triple sow to open, which I believe was an intended quad sow, and then wild yeetage on the triple axle, and then triple lots turn out, and then triple toe, and I was like... <laughs> I'm Gabriella. <laughs> so much like yeah. actual chaos within the program. But I think good music choice, Wild by John Legend and Gary Clark Jr. Yeah. And then uh, this lovely Peaky Blinders program for the free program. I'm such a fan of the Peaky Blinders program. Can you please keep this for next it's season, so though? Good. I'm such a fan of the crossover. Yeah, maybe when he's not injured. Maybe when he's not injured, but I'm a fan of the skating and Peaky Blinders crossover. I think it's great. And the music yes. is great, too, so. I agree. However, not a really a fan of the way that he skated this. There was just so much. I don't know. So many falls, so many deductions. Just kind of. So much yeetage. You can just tell when he leaves the ice that it's just not going to go well for him. It's a Hail Mary, man. It's a Hail Mary. All of them. Especially that second triple axle, which was a triple axle somehow oiler, double sow um, combo. He came out of the triple axle and you had zero idea what was going to be called. Is Was that an oiler? Like, did he put his foot down? Like, what's going on? Yes. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, d I do think he's a big, like, big diamond in the rough, though. Like, very rough like really needs to clean up his jumps and overall cleanliness of his technique but if and once he does that he already has the pcs potential and so he could be a real underdog in the next quad we will see we will see and in 11th place is roman ponsard representing france we haven't seen him skate for quite a fair bit um he did come out and say that this will be his last grand prix ever so that was that was a bittersweet moment yeah his short program did not go well at all none of the jumping passes no very very messy um fell on the triple axle that was called under huge skid on the takeoff um, I think you could probably predict he'd fall just based off of the takeoff and the moment he got into the air. Um, opened with a messy quad toe with a hand down. Um, and then the final triple lutz, triple toe, he got called uh, on the quarter for both jumps. I was oh, like, no. honey, the Russian girls are doing better than this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, in the free skate, though, however... Good improvement, especially in the first half here. Um, definitely needs some conditioning work, but a very good Elvis impersonator. Yes. Does he get bonus GOE for that? <laughs> maybe maybe Roman and Yaroslav um, Paniot need to do an Elvis off. I'd like to see oh, that. Oh, he, he was also a good Elvis impersonator. Yes. Yaro, he was. Um, but Roman was very happy with his free skate, and it was generally good. Um, he hung on to... A lot of the jumps in the latter half of the program, but he stood on his feet and had lovely quad toes to open. Yes, he did. Um, but again, just kind of lost that conditioning, that stamina near the end. Um, he had a double axle, double toe, double loop that was just kind of all over the place. <laughs> but again, it's a stamina thing. Oh, bless. Another one of my favorite combos <laughs> that I used to do. <laughs> Um, all right, and in 10th place, we have the 17-year-old Artur Danilian in his second Grand Prix stage of the season, skating to Don Juan for the short program with a lovely costume. <laughs> his costumes are great, to be honest. Yeah, definitely not sponsored by Nike. <laughs> and... I, I think he did uh, the first half of this program. Fantastic. Uh, the quad sal again called on the quarter. Um, and then the let's toe combo was great. Yeah. Can't complain. 
But then the triple axel was not all there today. Yeah, it was a rough and awkward fall. Although it was a difficult entrance into it. Um, he needs better flow out of his jumps, but beggars can't be choosers. We'll take the landed and clean jumps. Uh, he did look happy with his pre- overall performance in the short program, uh, but he did go for all of the elements, so that's good to see. And in the free program, he skated to Scheherazade, and he was so upset with himself at the end. So upset. Yeah, he was. He is always hard on himself. You can tell with this guy that he is just, he hates it when he makes mistakes. Looks so mad after he skates when he makes mistakes. He wears his heart on his sleeve, which is very unfortunate. Um, and again, in the second half, maybe it's a stamina thing with him too. I don't know. But both the first halves of these programs looked quite good. And then they kind of fell apart in the second half. Yes. Um, I felt like the this Scheherazade is a bit devoid of impactful choreography. I mean, Scheherazade is a gorgeous piece of music with so many um, dynamic moments. And it just felt like he was just skating around into his elements, just throwing an arm out here and there because, you know, choreography. But would love to see more of that. Um, there were splashes of very, very nice skating, but it was just marred with some big errors and falls, unfortunately. Yes. Uh, our ninth place finisher here, Kevin oh, Amos. Oh, God. Where to start with this man? Why are you competing, Kevin? Why are you competing? First of all, I don't even like that I'm saying his name, right? Like, anyways. Stop, please. I mean, the question of you by Prince is his short program. The opening planned quad toe oh, turned God. into a double. And then he fell on the quad sow, which, like, good attempt, but I was like, it hurts to watch you. Like, please, no, 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 no. He just sat there for a couple of seconds. I was like, oh, shit. I know. And I was like, please don't shoot yourself in the fucking groin because you might not even make the Olympics the way that you're going competing not healed. Truly. And then, like, did anyone, did you notice that he slowed down significantly in his skating speed after that opening double toe and quad sound? Oh, yeah. Because he's fucking injured? <laughs> he wasn't even kind of like, I, I mean, and he was because he's Kevin. But, like, you could tell that he wasn't even kind of, like, going for it in the step sequence either. Yeah. And that's telling because it's Kevin. Yes. <sighs> Anyways, uh, the free skate went significantly better. Yes. And we finally got to see it because last Grand Prix he skated, he withdrew from the free skate. I mean, I still would have preferred if he withdrew here because I'm like, please heal up. But I also understand that like you're in front of your home crowd and you want to, it's like important to compete at your home Grand Prix. But still, I want to see you at the Olympics in peak form, please. So maybe rest up a lot. Um, after this competition. Yes. Gorgeous costume, though. I f- The shirt is like a lovely purple-green mesh dye, and he really, really rocks it. Love to see that. Yeah, and he was so happy. Yes. So, so happy. Um, it was a clean program, right? Yeah, it was a clean program. Yeah. He was, I mean, everything was landed, although not, you know, not entirely without mistakes, but it was a clean program for sure. Yes. Um. Lovely quad toe to open, though. I was still worried about him, but he was crying at the end with happiness, and I'm like, okay, now you can rest. I Please. <laughs> Please. Yes, absolutely. Um, Our eighth place finisher. Oh, I love him. Adam Xiaohim Fa from I France. I love him. Kevin's countryman. I love him so much. Oh, I'm such a fan of Adam, and I love the rise of him in seasons past. He's kept his head down and worked hard, and now it's paying off in spades, and I'm really, really happy yeah. for him. Uh, Star Wars for the short program. Everything is great. Uh, well, until we got to the triple axel. <laughs> and then the quad sound. But, <laughs> so but, you know, the, the first jumping pass, the quad toe, triple toe. Great. <laughs> Yes, that was really, really excellent. Um, That was big. Yeah, so close for the triple axel. He flipped out of the quad sow as well, um, but kept his hands and butt off the ice. Um, Step sequence, that iconic Star Wars step sequence. Level four with plus threes, plus fours, and two plus fives. So, and well deserved. Yeah, we love to see it. Um, And gosh, that step sequence just kills me every time. I adore it. So good, so good. You know, the step sequence in the free skate, also phenomenal to the staff punk. Yes, the geeky energy coming out from this step sequence and the choreo sequence is just 
so 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 great i absolutely love it adam for the olympics please yes adam for the olympics um again not a perfect program good save and fight he fought to keep like to get all the landings for the entire program it's just he did yeah a lot of good saves on the landings but yeah my da punk geeky soul was living love it so good and he scored a 158.82 season's best for the free skate and him and his team was so pleased with that and that just made my heart happy yes oh my gosh so good um let's move on to our seventh place finisher andre mosliov Ah, uh, bless him so he skated to heart cry by drez for his short program which if you follow the dance world at all was uh, was a kind of like a whole moment and a phase uh, a few years back. Yes, it was a phase. Um, and Andre Vazelyov is bringing it back here. Much like Infinity Scarves. Wow. Phase. Mm, let's not bring Infinity <laughs> Scarves back. Let's leave those firmly where they are right now. Place it with the snood. Um, I wish there was more choreography to the impactful points of the music, though. But maybe that's just because I have high standards because I've seen many great pieces of choreography done to this music from the dance world. Um, but not really not a great uh, short program at all. Fell on the quad sow and the triple axle. Quad toe wasn't great as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, and the free skate, definitely a much better showing for him. Yes. Um, he came second in the free skate overall. Yeah. Which... Again, in the men's field, who knows what will happen. But I think this exactly. is a, definitely a well-deserved second. Uh, the first three jumping passes, the quad toe, triple toe. We had the quad sal, the quad toe. Woo. Great. Right on. Right on the money with all those. Easy, too. Um, he's, again, in maroon slash cranberry, really the color of the season. A real test of virtue on the ice here. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And maybe that's why we saw an improvement in his skating skills. Much better flow and control than what we've seen from past seasons. He still skates um, kind of – he slows down before his jumps, which we're more used to, but that's okay. Still time to improve. He's only 18. Yeah, he's got plenty of life ahead of him. Yeah. Would also like to see more facial expressions from Andre because the jumps and the choreography, they're there. But bless him, he was so early on the music in his oh, free yes. skate. rushing the music. But he kept that, like, intense thinking face going on until the end. I was like, good job. <laughs> you know – Sometimes I don't have an intense thinking face, and that's sometimes because I don't think whatsoever. So <laughs> I've got an intense resting bitch face, though, <laughs> when I'm working. No one wants to, like, come near me at all. And I'm like, good. <laughs> don't good. Come near me. Please. Six feet. Um, oh, my gosh. Speaking of sixth place finisher, Keegan Messing, Keegan Messing and little Wyatt, my favorite. Oh, he's so proud of Wyatt. It makes me it makes me cry. I adore him. Um, we have, again, the strange cover of Never Tear Us Apart for the short program. <laughs> Still unsure. They could only inf- afford, like, half of In Excess and half of Joe Cocker, but not <laughs> the full piece of either. That was the strategy. Half, half. Everything was just a bit under today. Yeah, just a little off. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe this... It was like that for the whole competition for Keegan, I, f- I feel. We've definitely seen him skate... Both versions of um, his programs much better. Just felt a little off this competition for him. Yeah, I agree. I don't know what it was, but something seemed a little off. Yeah, for the free skate to Lullaby for an Angel by Carl Hugo and Home by Philip Phillips. I see the the plaid shirt and I think of Ed Sheeran, but maybe I'm supposed to be thinking of um, Louis Capaldi. But <laughs> we just never know. Uh, it is very classic Keegan, though, this this yes. plaid checkered business here. Um, Philip Phillips. I love home. I love Keegan skating to home by Philip Phillips. It's great. I do, too. Um, however, again, just not not his best event. I really wish Keegan would just kind of have a solid streak, because if you remember his last competition, he had this hard fall and we were really gunning for that concussion protocol but it seems like he's doing okay he kind of gave like a little eh, kind of look after the free skate so yeah the jumps were a little rough lots of breaking at the hips slash landing forwards and not really stable on most of his landings but at least no which chin- is so weird for him that's that's weird for keegan yeah the legs and like thighs and knees were still working but 
Yeah, at least no chin bashes, so <laughs> that's nice to see. It's an improvement, I guess, question mark. Improvement. <laughs> uh, but pipped to sixth by only by half a point by Dmitry Aliyev, who ha- had a much better competition than we've seen from him this season. Uh, we still do not know what is happening with him. <laughs> he's still not giving us any more clarity. Yes, he said in an interview last time and in this very kind of mysterious way um, that something is happening, but he cannot tell us what it is. Um, he makes me so sad. He just seems so upset with himself all the time. I know. I'm In an interview, he was just like, oh, do I feel like an, a contender for the Olympic team? I don't think so at all. But I'm starting to feel the urge to want to fight for this like spot or goal. And I was just like, oh, this poor guy. And then he also said in an interview, I managed to get pleasure from the programs he did here, which I haven't felt this season. I'm like, what is this like morose thing that's going on with Dima this season? What's going on? I don't know. Makes me sad. Big sad. I don't know. Anyways, uh, the free skate, he seemed considerably happier, although... (laughs) Very exhausted. Yes. I mean, just I'm just glad that he had a better competition. Um, he looked a bit more sure-footed. Sure-footed, <laughs> as they say. Sure-footed um, <laughs> in, in this competition. It's. I'm interested to know what story they're trying to tell with his choreography, though. Like, you know that point in the middle of his program where he stops by the boards and then looks angsty and then puts a hand to his temple? <laughs> I have zero idea what is going on. <laughs> That's how we feel about men's figure skating. Um, anyway, that triple axel, he yeeted it with a huge skid. A yeeting, skidding triple axel that he stepped out of. Um, he was gassed, but I'll take a no fall and no pop Dima at this stage. I'll take it. We'll take yeah. it. Yeah. Take what we can get. All right. And in fourth place, we have Dennis Vasilievs who had an amazing short program. Oh my gosh, so happy. Happy Dennis. Uh, But his hair just never stays in that ponytail. Nope, but do we really care when he has scored a season best of 89.76? Absolutely not. Uh, So clean, so nice. Uh, Step sequence was great, although he did change it. Yes, no slide anymore. Um, The slide fall has gone and it's replaced with an ending position kind of squat thing that requires... Quad endurance. <laughs> oh, yes. Quad endurance to the nines at the end there. He did extremely well um, in the short program. And then Romeo and Juliet for the free skate. Mm, he skates fine and decent after the opening quad sow that he bailed to a triple sow. So that got downgraded. Um, and a decent enough triple axle double toe following up with another triple axle that was called under. But after some amazing free skates from others, it just wasn't enough to keep him on the podium. Although he's very similar to Jason in the sense that, um, you know, doesn't have a lot of quads and focuses on the skating skills side of things. But at the moment, he doesn't match Jason in, um, in any of those areas. So any of the strengths that Jason has. No, he does not. Um, But definitely a big improvement over when we saw him last. Uh, And always great to see him. I love Dennis. Yes, same. Speaking of Jason, he came in third here. Yay. Yay. Cinnamon. I felt that, although I still feel like somebody should make an NFT of it, I felt like it was a little bit off and he skated slower all around here. Maybe it's just the camera. Came in under Dennis by just a marginal amount, 0.4. I felt like from the get-go, Jason was like a semi-quaver off the music. Yeah, something about it didn't feel quite as on the money here. I mean, still phenomenal by all means. Um, But I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what it was. But the free skate, hello, no rotational calls on the quad sow. Yes. Yes. And he stood up. Oh, my God. Amazing. So good. So good. So, so, so good. Unfortunately, towards the end of the program, there were more pops in his jumps and not the greatest. However, a perfect score for the choreographic sequence, all plus fives. Oh, yes. As he deserves. As he deserves. 
and the amount of support for Jason in France is incredible. So good. There were like signs all up in the crowd, such as Jason Brown for mayor, as well as don't forget your costume. Don't forget your costume. Where? Yeah, I don't know what the hell I don't understand. Um, yeah, there was a sign saying that's not a counter and what kind of spin is that? And clean up the Choctaw. I what? Have no idea what's going what do any of these mean? Such dedication. The signs looked awesome. Um, and he misses out on the silver by just under 0.8 points. So very tight. Very tight. Yes. Uh, definitely. I just love, I love this. I love everything happening here. Um, in our silver medalist, Shun Sato from Japan, looking so confident here. I know. However, that very scary fall at Skate America. Oh, yes. Uh, very glad that he has given himself somewhat ample time to get that shoulder, you know, stronger and not dislocated again. Not dislocated. <laughs> That's nice. Um, again, the costume for the short program to Four Seasons is not Vivaldi, not Four Seasons, but it's gorgeous. I'm sure Vivaldi won't mind. It's a noble coat in Animal Crossing. Yes, exactly. Beautiful quad toe, triple toe, beautiful triple axle. Scored 87.82 seasons best for the short program. Yes, and then, oh gosh, Phantom of the Opera. Here we go. (laughs) Is this a new jacket for Phantom? Maybe I just can't remember whether he had this same thing at Skate America. I... You know, I never know with phantom costumes. My memory is long running <laughs> for phantom costumes. Um, but oh gosh, so everything phenomenal besides that, uh, the single toe on the end of that. that besides one the single toe. But whatever. We need a little toe. Everyone is little toes. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're not talking about toes. <laughs> Um, Mark Hanready said that Shun had the highest planned technical content uh, for the free skate and he wowed us with a huge quad lutz, easy through the quad flip and two quad toes, even with the minor mistakes. What a skate. Wild. Oh my gosh. Next quad is going to be Shun versus Yuma for sure. Oh my god. True though. True. Shun is really trying to get onto that Olympic team and he's showing that he's definitely not backing down from that goal this season with the skates he had here. No, he is not. Um, However, our gold medalist here, two-time gold medalist on this Grand Prix circuit, Yuma Kageyama, 18-year-old from Japan. Yes. Short program, still not into it. Really? Sorry. I don't think it's I don't think it's anything special, but I enjoy it. I, I do. Um, however, Michael Buble, since it's holiday season, he is definitely out here smiling and laughing. And yesterday I had a peppermint chocolate Hagen dazs square, so I'm sure he was smiling and laughing about What's that too. That? <laughs> peppermint hey, you know what? We're running out of time, so I'm not gonna ask. You're gonna explain it to me later. Um. <laughs> it's festive. It's a festive thing. Oh. Okay. It's like a peppermint mocha, but an ice cream. Oh, okay. Um, all right. So much better short program here to when you're smiling. Buble was smiling. Um, 100.64 seasons best in the short program. So Ugh, big old score. Big old him. score. But why did the cameraman zoom straight into Yuma's crotch slash belt buckle at the end? That was so awkward. Oh my gosh. This cameraman just... You know what the cameraman was doing? Like during the replays, and, and also not during the replays, it was he was zooming in on the faces of the athletes while Ew, they were spitting. No. I was like, do we need to see that? That's that is the worst time to zoom. Every time. No one is attractive in their spins or their jumps. Really, don't, don't zoom into the face. That's that's our moment to like let out all of our um, all of our bad facial expressions. Yeah, and like we need to see the shapes, not the face. No one cares what's happening in the face. Exactly. Anyway, <laughs> free skate to the Gladiator soundtrack. Opening with a quad sal to spread eagle. Keeps it controlled despite wanting to over-rotate it. Oh, well, excuse you, Yuma. <laughs> e- exactly. Excuse you and your talent. Okay, just... Yeah, all right. <laughs> quad toe, triple toe, easy as pie. Hand down on the second quad toe as well. Um... He popped the he popped an axle as well, so not the cleanest free skate. He did say that um, overall he was fine with the free skate, but the second half of his um, program was a quote disaster. Oh no! Um, but 
the overall quality of Yuma's skating is so incredible for his age. Yeah, and just like in general, you know, just so good. Yes, but definitely deserved winner here. And I, you know what? He he is a threat for that Olympic podium. I'm telling you. I am telling you. Oh my gosh. Well, that about wraps it up for our men and ice dance episode. And let's quickly go into our kiss and cry. All right, first we're going to start off with actually, it, this just came out while we were prepping to record this actually. Christopher Kaluza from Philippines has announced that they're retiring again. Um, you can see the posts on Instagram and Twitter. You know, he's he's given us so many lovely moments over his career and we hope that he has a wonderful career outside of skating and he is always welcome back um, in any capacity whenever he wants. Yes, we also had a Warsaw Cup, which was happening simultaneously, which we talked about in our Women and Paris episode as well. And the big buzz at Warsaw Cup in uh, the dance event was that Deanna Davis and Gleb Smolkin scored... Scored huge. <laughs> yes, scored huge. Scored huge. Uh, around a little more than 81 points in the rhythm dance and 118.6 in the free dance with 199.9 overall. Oy, oy vey. And they topped PCS in both programs. And they beat, they beat um, Kana Muramato and Daisuke Takahashi, who came in second place with 190.16 in total, as well as Green and Parsons, who came in third with 187.84. Green and Parsons with their phenomenal programs. I know. Um, look, the Federation and the judges are really doing Diana and Gleb dirty. They're doing them so dirty because, yes... They're not the best ice dancers out there, of course. They're young. They are improving. But don't discredit them and kind of do all of that by pushing them so quick when we know that it's not deserved at this point. It just takes away all credit from from the work that they are doing at the moment. Yes. And that makes me sadder than, you know, more sad than anything. And um, we have Scott Scover's mom coming out saying that everyone's already talking about, you know, the pushing of Diana and Glev, that there will be a replacement in the free dance at the Olympic team event because Nikita Katsalopov, um, has, you know, has injured his back quite badly and all of that. And then they're talking about Diana and Glev being the replacement team. And I'm going, holy shit. <laughs> oh my gosh. Imagine. Wild. Um, Anyway, huge discussions over that. But then also, to lighten the mood, let's finish off on Warsaw Cup for Men, where Soda Yamamoto took the title, with Daniel Grassl coming in second and Piotr Gumenik coming in third. And those three had zero clue what to do on the men's podium. Um, (laughs) It was absolute chaos. Like, Piotr came in with no mask, uh, forgets to take his medal. Then the announcer says that, Koshiro won the silver and everyone was confused as hell. Um, and then Daniel Grassel was announced. He comes, brings Piotr's mask for him. <laughs> then Soda comes in. Everyone's standing on the podium. Um, everyone's confused. Then Daniel goes down and gives them everyone's medals because <laughs> they didn't collect the medals. And then when the anthem was playing, Soda was turned the other way so away from the flag oh my god and Piotr was so confused he was just like why is soda standing that way taps soda on the shoulder and says the flag's over here mate <laughs> <laughs> and soda turns around <laughs> wild what's also wild is that um wesley chu from canada won the entire free skate after coming in i have no no clue like 11th anyway the, the men's chaos was all in warsaw <laughs> for this week yeah, lessened the men's chaos. And yes. Well, that wraps up our episode for today. I'm Claudia, and come chat with us at Let's Get Down Pod on Twitter and Instagram. That's L U T Z Get Down Pod. And if you want to work with us, shoot us an email at Let's Get Down Pod at gmail.com. If you like this podcast and are both smiling and laughing with Michael Buble because Yuma won his second gold medal this Grand Prix series, please leave us a review and give us some five-star love. We would really appreciate it. Thank you all so much for listening. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.